HTC's Wildfire wasn't exactly one of last year's must-have handsets, but it wasn't trying to be, let's face it, it was the poor man's desire. An affordable handset designed to give users that smartphone experience without all the high-end frills found on much pricier smartphones. Now it's time for round two in the form of the Wildfire S, and it's certainly much better looking this time round with a row of buttons instead of the trackpad coupled with a much better screen. It remains underpowered though, running a single core 600 megahertz processor, but it's still nice and compact and pocket friendly, running Android 2.3. And it also feels a lot sturdier thanks to its metal body. And it's still too small for those of you with big hands. So the Wildfire S has managed to rectify some of the issues found on the original. The most important being that screen. The original Wildfire was let down massively by its low res screen, so much so some Android apps wouldn't play on it at all. But the S manages to go one better and squeeze 320 by 480 pixels into its 3.2 inch screen. That's obviously not going to give the iPhone 4 a run for its money, but it's certainly much better than before. So we've already established it's running Android 2.3, so it's running very nearly the latest version of Google's OS. However, it's not all good. The Wildfire S isn't actually capable of taking advantage of everything Gingerbread has to offer. For example, there's no front-facing camera for video calls and the lack of an NFC chip means you won't be able to take advantage of wireless payment options when they're rolled out into the UK, of course. And the slow processor means it's not up to running the latest Android apps and games. So games like Fruit Ninja and everybody's favourite Angry Birds, for example, come with a side serving of stuttering and the Sense UI is also uncharacteristically jerky but at least it packs the latest version of the Sense UI. Now, one thing we love about HTC phones is Sense, which is still miles better than the competition with its assortment of useful features and handy widgets. So you're treated to new things like the enhanced settings in the notification bar and the ability to filter your app drawer based on items you've downloaded or recently used. The five megapixel camera isn't great, so it's hardly changed from the original, but there is the added bonus of an LED flash to light up those dark snaps. And overall, pictures aren't that bad. You also get a 2 gig micro SD card in the box, which is a decent amount of storage for the casual user. If you want more, simply buy a bigger memory card. On top of that, you also get the usual Wi-Fi and 3G connectivity and about a day's worth of battery life before your phone dies. And that's the Wildfire S. It's improved on its predecessor by boosting that screen res and offering a more up-to-date operating system, but in the grand scheme of things, there isn't a great amount of difference and its slow processor means it feels a little bit behind the times. But if you're not in the market for a cutting edge, top of the range smartphone, the Wildfire S is certainly worth a look in. Its size means it's not really suited to the large handed user, but it will slip effortlessly into your pocket. Plus, it's a far cry from smartphone monsters like the Dell Venue Pro and HTC HD7.